So when you're out about in the woods, you never really know what you're going to come across. I've just saw something in the undergrowth, which I thought was trash initially, but now I realise it's not trash at all. It's actually something awesome. Look at this. See this here? This is an enormous cauliflower fungus. There's two of them, in fact, side, side by side. So here we are. Look at that. There's one there, and there's one over here. And that is huge. I mean, look at my hand in comparison to that thing. It's just a massive cauliflower fungus. So, I thought this was big, but apparently these can grow up to a meter in size and up to 30 kilograms. So this is relatively small, but it is in three parts. That's the third part, and I've just shown you the first two parts. Uh, what I also point out is these two things. These are called dyer's mushroom, and they can be used to make brown dye for dyeing clothes. Now, when you smell this mushroom, it has a strange kind of a latexy or kind of chemically smell, and it is actually full of interesting chemicals. So an antibiotic and antifungal compound called spirasol was isolated from this mushroom, and this was actually one of the first crystalline antibiotics to be examined, and that was in 1923. So there's other compounds that have been extracted from this. Some of them inhibit melanin synthesis in melanoma cancer cells, and others of them appear to inhibit growth of MRSA. There's over 20 peer-reviewed studies, probably more by now, implicating the compounds of this mushroom as either being anti-tumor or immunostimulating. They believe that it stimulates macrophage production or has some other immunomodulating effect. Another study looked at wound healing and found that oral consumption appeared to increase synthesis of collagen, which improved the wound healing. But mainly, most of the studies have looked at cancer, and it appears that it could be a potential candidate for orally administered cancer treatment. Anyway, it's really interesting, and it's worth keeping an eye on. So it's called Sparasis crispa. Sp Sparasis means to tear in Latin, and... It's kind of got this, call it cauliflower, because look at the kind of, it look, kind of looks, well it doesn't really look like cauliflower does it, but you know that's it. And in the fold you can get a kind of debris, so you need really need to wash it. But I'm going to collect some of this because it's got, it's known to stimulate the immune system and have anti-tumor properties. You know, not, this isn't some nutcases saying this, you know, this is actual peer-reviewed journals have studied these things. So I'm just going to take a bit of it. I'm going to take all of it, but there's a hell of a lot of it here. I'm going to try and take some of the new, the new, the newer bits of growth and just take a bit to consume. Oh man, that's huge, isn't it? It's actually quite a good one to dry. So if I take some home, I can then dry it. I think that would probably do. I don't want to overkill it, leave some for someone else. There we go, the basket's looking pretty good. So I've got this fantastic cauliflower fungus, and what to do with it? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deep fry it in tempura batter. For the batter, I'm going to use one egg, the same mass in plain flour, and the most tempura batter recipes call for cold water, fizzy cold water so that the batter kind of puffs out. Well, I'm going to use this lager, and I'm going to put in the same amount that I do in mass for the egg and for the flour. I'm going to mix them all up in this bowl, and then just dip this in and put it in the deep fryer. Deep fat fryer, which is set to around 170 degrees. All right, let's do it. The easiest way I can think to deal with this is to start with the egg because I don't know its mass. So I'm just going to break the egg into this cup and it's 56 grams. So now I'm going to measure out 56 grams of flour, plain flour. I'm not going to bother using a sieve. Some people talk about you know having lumpy batter. There we go, it's 56 grams. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just whisk up the egg a little bit. 
then we're going to mix it all together with the beer. I'm going to measure out the beer as well. I'm measure out the beer. I'm actually working today so I can't be drinking beer because we British are not responsible enough. When I was in, um, I once went to a Dutch mobile phone company when I used to work for Vodafone and they had beer in the fridge and I was astounded and I was like, you've got beer in the fridge? And they were like, yeah, we're, we're adults. <laughs> we can drink a beer at lunchtime if we want, you know, we're adults. I thought, yeah, good point. So anyway, let's mix this together. So I'm hoping this will work. I don't really know. I guess I'll start with the egg. It's a bit lumpy, but... And I want to try and use this pretty much straight away. So I'm going to just pour in the liquid as well. A bit. Okay, that, doesn't look, that looks pretty good, I think. Because they say not to overdo it. So I reckon that's enough. Probably overdoing it. Let's just go get on with this and just dump this in here, I think. And I think that will do. So let's have a look, put it in the tray. Spread it out a bit. Let's do this. Been cooking for a minute, so let's have a look how it's going. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna give it a little bit longer, but that is almost done, I would say. We're looking at two and a half minutes now. I reckon this is probably done. I mean, this this is only about a millimeter thick, this stuff. <laughs> Didn't expect that, how to, do, how to deal with that. Uh, Uh, I don't know how you deal with that. <laughs> Any suggestions in the comments would be good. But there we go. There we are. And it's nice and crispy and nice and hot. So only thing left now is to try it. So time to try this out then. Okay, that was just tempura batter. <laughs> There's probably a better way to batter these, perhaps in individual strips, I'm not quite sure. Oh, there we go, that's got a bit in it. Hmm. That's pretty tasty, actually. I perhaps overdid it a bit. This bit's got a bit more mushroom in. Hmm. Mm. It's very nice. It's very nice. I think I'll probably do it for a little bit less to get a bit more flavour out of the um, bits of mushroom because they're very, very thin. So they really don't need a lot of um, time. But that's a quick and easy way to make a nice tempura cauliflower fungus starter or side dish, I guess. Alright, well thank you for watching and see you next time for more Mushroom Adventures.